Hello and welcome. I'm Michael Pierce, and this is The Human Condition. Today we're talking about the vitamins B1 and B2, thiamine and riboflavin. Just for an introduction, we're not going to go terribly deep here, but in general, it's extremely important to realize that B1 and B2 are vitamins that are available and are fairly safe to take, but they can be taken too much and they can be taken too little. We see in vitamin B1 is thiamine. We, I see that in my student population because students we use their brains so heavily that they deplete themselves of vitamin B1 more readily than other people might. You see B1 deficiencies or thiamine deficiencies in alcoholics as well. And what it can give you is some real mental situation problems where you just can't focus, you can't think, you have depression, you have anxiety, and you have memory problems. You can have a, a very common problem that I've seen quite a lot of, which is Korsakoff's dementia, which is alcoholism that causes B1 deficiency. Now, I've been able to really snap people back that are, look like they have Alzheimer's disease, and they're actually alcoholics, and we give them vitamin B1. Sometimes I work with doctors who give injections, and sometimes we give vitamin B1 orally. It works very well orally in most cases, unless there's an absorption problem in the guts. We can snap them out of these, uh, these depressions with, with memory loss and dementia with B1 in a few days. If they go back to alcoholism, it's not going to last and they will, they will get worse. But you can see this commonly. B1 and B12 are involved in alcoholism most, most commonly. So just understand that, that there are children that will get B1 they, deficiency. They will have um, memory problems, focus problems, and the parents will go, what the heck is wrong with my child? And sometimes a little B1 will, will snap them right out of it. We're not doing doses right now. We'll, we'll get into doses in another session. The next vitamin is um, B2. B2 is riboflavin. B2 we see a lot of, of the time in northern climates where it gets cold and dry because B2 is involved in skin cracking, especially in the folds of the body, in the, in the, the corners of the lips. There's actually a really common sign called angular chelosis or angular chelitis, which is where the corners of the mouth crack and bleed. And uh, we also get cracks in the groin, cracks in the fingers. We get cracks in the creases of, of the body. And while that can also be a symptom of an omega-3 or 6 deficit, which will make skin crack and cause thickening of the heels, and, and other signs that look like um, gallbladder signs and bile signs, like, like dry, flaky, ashy heels and dry, flaky, ashy calves and shins and scalp. We, um, we see it also not just from omega-3 and 6 fats, but from B2. So B2 is very pathognomonic or indicative when you see these angular chelitis and, and chelosis of the, of the corners of the mouth. You'll also see cracks in the lips. You'll see uh, these, these corner cracks, especially and you might see cracks in the eyelids, like up here, like this. You might see um, painful, bloody cracks in the creases of the toes or fingers uh, the, where, where the folds are. It can happen in the summertime when a person is doing a lot of, of cellular turnover of skin. So while B1 is, is focused really on the brain, and B2 is really more focused on the skin, they both do have to do with the brain and, and the skin. And, and really, all the B vitamins are related to rapid DNA turnover. Whenever your body is trying to produce a whole lot of something, a whole lot of new cells or a whole lot of energy or a whole lot of ATP for energy, you're going to use B vitamins and minerals at a high rate. And so you'll see that happen in the summertime in the pools where all the kids are running around and they've all got the cracked fingers and the cracked heels and, and the cracked creases of the toes and the cracked eyelids. You might see in the summer when they're in pool season running around and you might see it in the winter when they're dry and their, their feet are stuffed in boots and, and they have lots of rapid cell turnover. The kids are producing more and more cells and sloughing them off. And as they do that, production of new skin cells, they will require more and more DNA replication, which requires B vitamins and minerals. So um, if you have already taken B1 or B2 and you think that it's the right thing and it's not working, then consider your minerals. You need, thing, you need minerals like zinc and minerals like magnesium and manganese and uh, copper and, and calcium and iron. These are all basic minerals that a person might need in order to make those vitamins work. One of the reasons that we lose B1 in our culture is grain. You know, if we, if we have a diet high in processed grain, we're going to sometimes have too little B1. And of course, if you drink too much alcohol, B1 can be depleted quite a lot chronically. That's vitamin B1 and B2. 
We generally tell people to start with label recommendations of their individual B supplement products. Most of the time we find that when people take a B complex, they don't have enough B1 and B2. And over time, the B vitamins compete with each other. So if a person's taking a typical B complex, they're gonna have lots of, of B6, lots of B12, lots of folic acid, and they will probably not have enough things like biotin, B1, B2, and vitamin B5, and sometimes vitamin B3. So there tends to be this like, you know, the A team of B vitamins is what I just said, B12, B6, folate, and, uh, the, and the B team, the one that's neglected, that has to be shored up and that is depleted by taking those, those high, high powerful B complexes because the ratio is so high that they get depleted relatively of B1, B2, B3, B5, and, and biotin. So that's kind of an overview of what happens when people have these deficiencies or when they take too much of a, of a B50 or a B complex for energy and it ends up depleting them of those, those B vitamins.